begin with Senator Susan Collins, Republican of Maine. I guess it's the toughest question in the world, Senator, and that is, do you believe that Susan Rice, the U.N. ambassador, knowingly covered up a breach of national security? Well, let me say this, Chris. Our purpose is to understand the security failure in Benghazi, what the administration told the American public about it, and how we can learn lessons to keep our personnel safer in the future. So that's my interest and goal in this situation. I think it's evident, and indeed Ambassador Rice herself has admitted, that the information that she gave out on those Sunday shows was not accurate in several crucial aspects. She says that she relied on information that was given to her. But it's obvious that she chose to emphasize some aspects and downplay others. And frankly, I think the U.N. ambassador, along with the secretary of state, should be above politics and that she should have just said, no, I'm not going to go on those shows. It's the wrong issue and the wrong time of year. I've got to maintain my credibility. Do you know or believe that she was given classified materials which conflicted with what she said on Meet the Press and those other shows? The classified materials are different from the unclassified, but they are not different when it comes to a discussion of many of the major elements. What bothers me a great deal is the president of Libya himself was saying that this was a terrorist attack, that they had arrested 50 people, and that there had been Al-Qaeda influenced individuals from other countries that had come in and that it was premeditated and planned. And I just don't understand why the administration would have Susan Rice go on television and say that the views essentially of the president of Libya uh, just didn't matter. She completely discounted them. That is well, make what sense you me. said you, you suggested she was behaving politically fair enough if that's the case what would be the political purpose in denying the role of terrorism in this act the central role of terrorism organized terrorism in the death of uh, ambassador stevens what would be your purpose politically in that I believe that the administration wanted to portray Libya as an unqualified success story. And Ambassador Rice was one of the chief advocates of our involvement in Libya, so arguably had a personal stake in that as well. I think that it was contrary to the narrative of the administration to say that Libya was awash with weapons, that there was a growing al-Qaeda presence, that there were training camps for Islamic extremists, particularly near Benghazi, and that there had been 274 security incidents in just the past 13 months, five of which were, I mean, one out of five were in Benghazi, including an attempt on the life for the British ambassador that caused the British to withdraw their consulate from Benghazi. So I think that it was contrary to the success story that the administration wanted to portray when it comes to Libya. Let me go back to the facts as you know them now. Was there a role played by that video, that anti-Islamic video made in California in this horror story? Did it play a role? It may have inspired some of the people uh, who later entered the compound, but I have not seen evidence that it was the cause of the violent attack on our personnel in Benghazi that cost four Americans their lives. And certainly, Ambassador Rice's statement on ABC News when she said that it was the direct result of the video uh, was not accurate. And today to, she told me that she did not intend to say what she said on ABC. 
I want you to listen to something. This is in the New York Times. It was in today about what we know now of the attacks in Benghazi. This is the New York Times Day and straight reporting. On the ground accounts indicate that Ms. Rice's description of the attack, though wrong in some respects, was accurate in others. Witnesses to the assault said it was carried out by members of the Ansar al Sharia, the militant group, without any warning or protest in retaliation for an American made video mocking the Prophet Muhammad. Is that the truth as you know it? It's, it's partially the truth. Uh, when you look at what happened, and I've reviewed tapes, I've reviewed classified materials, I've, sent through, I've sat through hours of briefings, there were some people who, who no doubt came onto the compound not only to loot it, but because they were angry about the video. But that is not the primary cause of the assault on the compound. Okay. If you look at what happened, uh, there was clearly no protest, and the administration concedes that now, there was no protest that it preceded the assault on the compound. And the fact is that that was known prior to September 16th when Ambassador Rice went on those shows. There was conflicting information. I will. I totally readily concede that, but there was reporting and information that said that there wasn't any protest, including interviews with people who had been there on the ground. So for Ambassador Rice or any other administration official to maintain with such certainty that there was no, that there was a protest and that the assault was primarily linked to the video just does not hold up. Okay, thank you so much for coming on Harbaugh, Senator Sue and Sue Collins. Thank you so much of Maine. Now